Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Bitcoin did produce a new 2023 high today, a new multi-month high, which is definitely interesting um, and in line with our forecast. Since then, Bitcoin, however, had to deal with a little bit of a setback. However, it has sort of maintained its position up there. Um, but to be honest, I would have liked to see a little bit more follow through. And I'm going to tell you why. And I've also put an alternative or let's say just a second scenario onto the chart. It's not really an alternative. At the moment, they point still both to the upside. Um, it's just, you know, um, it's just a different way how this subwave structure can unfold. And I also tell you why I added that to the chart, but it doesn't make a difference really to the targets. Um, what we need to understand before we zoom into the microstructure is really that Bitcoin could be very, very close to a top in this wave one, yeah, um, if it hasn't topped already. You see, it's more and more difficulty, it's more and more difficult for Bitcoin to push any higher in this current structure. It's a very choppy, yeah, very sloppy structure, very difficult, um, also tricky to interpret. Now, if you ask different Elliott Wave analysts, you will get different wave counts here. It is also not so important what exactly the microstructure is. I always recommend that people don't get analyzed, uh, don't get analyzed, don't get paralyzed by um, the analysis. So avoid the analysis paralysis and just focus on what's relevant for trading. Okay, uh, there's no point in trying to, you know, figure out five micro counts and uh, get to the most pristine wave count. And once you have arrived at the fifth one, the first one is invalidated. So that's just pointless. Um, we also don't have time for that. We want to focus on what's what's you know what's relevant. Focus on what's you know relevant for practice. Be pragmatic. Basically, that's what Elliott Wave is about. We don't want to earn a college degree or university degree in Elliott Wave. It's not about that. Okay, um, you can produce five different counts here and whatever. Um, important is that there are different suggestions still that still point towards higher, point towards another extension higher. But I will also tell you what we need to see as initial indication that the wave two has started to unfold. The support range for wave two is between 32,780 and 27,400. Ideally, we don't even go down to the 78.6 retrace. It would be not very typical for Bitcoin. I think throughout 2023 and also last year, Bitcoin did not get to a 78.6 retrace. Very strong. I think the 50%, 61.8, they are already deep for Bitcoin. So I wouldn't even, I wouldn't rely on this down here. However, if Bitcoin really needs to use that area, it can come down deep if it needs to. And we talk about a potential decline from up there in percent of around um, 15 percent yeah, all the way down to around about 28 percent. You know, that's all that's all possible. Um, yeah, if we talk about a wave two correction, that would obviously be a correction that should take roughly. And, you know, let's just add the time zones here. I don't use them very often but just to indicate um, a second. FIP time zones. We don't use them very often. No, here and did it here just to show you in terms of length, right? So we have here, this is the length of wave one. And typically, you know, if we say, okay, the wave two has the same length as one, then we arrive in February, end of February. Um, if we say 60% roughly uh, of wave one, which makes sense because the wave two has three waves, whereas the wave one has five. So roughly that, then let me just shift that across. <clears throat> then we would say the wave two could end around end of January. Yeah? So at least, I mean, I'm looking for at least four to five, maybe even six weeks in length can be shorter at the very minimum, very minimum. I would say, you know, certainly you would look at three weeks or so at the very minimum, there is no need uh, for a wave two to be, let's say, longer than wave one. There is also no need to reach like 60% in, in duration. Um, as we can see, if we zoom out a little bit and take a look at this correction here that occurred here between February, February 23 and March 23, that was also only a few weeks, a very short, 
at least in duration, very short wave two. So that can all happen, okay? So I just wanna give you a little bit of orientation. So I just wanna make sure that you understand we could be very close to a top. However, don't just assume a top is in. We are still watching for higher prices in the short term. But most of this move is literally done. I've been saying that now for the last few weeks, just since then the price hasn't really moved. So the message might be very repetitive, but I'm still watching for higher prices short term, ideally towards um, yeah, 40, 41K sort of, yeah, maybe even a little higher. But does the price need to do it? No, there are ways to count this move up already as complete, but I would not blindly assume that this move up is complete in wave one until we have a first break of micro support. So the idea that I shared with you in the last few days was here this white wave count. The idea of an Elliott wave triangle um, that unfolded and also proved to be, um, well, in the first instance, correct because we had a break to the upside, okay, um, on the one hour chart now. So let's just take a look at this. So the idea was we have a wave A to the upside, um, then the B wave as a triangle and the C wave to the upside, all in a diagonal. Then we had a very corrective looking decline in an A wave. Um, this was a B wave zigzag, uh, A, B, C, then a C wave down, a D wave up. Very important that the D doesn't really go B, uh, above B, it's not, and then an E wave down. And then, yeah, that was it. And I highlighted to you a descending wedge and a potential breakout to the upside, which happened. And this could now follow through. The thing is, if this really is a triangle or was a triangle, then you would have expected a little bit further follow through. Yeah, After a break of the triangle, we normally see rapid price action. Didn't happen. So I'm considering something different because of that, even though, yeah, the you know, it did break out in the expected direction. It's just not following through. So there might be a different viewpoint here, um, which is it's just an ending diagonal. So wave one to the upside, wave two to the downside, then now A, B, C in wave three, then a four and a five. So at the very least, I'd like it to get to um, 39,550, yeah? then still get it, give us a four and a five. But it is technically possible to count this move up as complete if it's really, you know, if we really need to. Um, then a first break below 37,480 which is here the um, Thursday low, might be a first indication that a top has formed. And then we can explore the structure of the down, down um, of the downtrend. Yeah? If it's uh, pointing us towards um, something more bearish like this wave two, then I will highlight that to you. But um, yeah, first of all, we are still above that level. So we're still focusing on higher, but I can tell you a break below Thursday's low might be a first indication that a top has been made, not a confirmation, only first indication. Yeah, that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links for those in the video description. And there you can find additional content every single day. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.